How's it going, everyone? So what am I working on today? I'm actually working on showing you something. I want to um, show you a tool, basically. Now, let's, let's do a scenario here. You have a Chevy small block, stock motor that popped a head gasket or blew an exhaust manifold gasket, whatever. You had to unbolt the exhaust manifold. Now, this, this is for exhaust manifolds. You unbolted the exhaust manifold. Now you go to bolt it back up. You can't catch the bolts. The bolts will not go back into the head. Well, what's going on? Well, on today's cars, that's really not too common. It does happen. They actually make a tool, because I'll explain to you what happens. And I remember when I first was experiencing this many, many years ago, I didn't know any better, and I didn't even know they made a tool for this. I just, I, I, the first time it happened, I thought it was just a fluke. And then it happened again to me, and then it happened again to me, and I'm like, huh. And then somebody's like, oh, why don't you just use this? And I'm like, what the heck's this? Well, this is the tool for that. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know it. I'm looking at the tool, and I'm like, how does this thing work? And then they explained it to me. So now let me explain it to you. So on most of today's cars that use actual cast iron exhaust manifolds, the manifolds actually have a flange that goes from one cylinder to the next. It's basically like a broad, yeah, basically a broad flange that goes all the way from one end to the other. So this won't happen to those. Older, probably even, well, no, obviously they don't make the small box Chevy anymore. But up till whatever year they stopped making them in 2000, they still use a standard cast iron exhaust manifold. And it would still happen to those. I'm assuming if, any, if there's any other engines out there that have this style exhaust manifold, it could probably happen to that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So now here, this is an exhaust manifold from a Ford Fusion. A lot of newer cars have this style where you have this big broad flange that goes all the way across and it keeps everything in line. Obviously, it's going to expand and contract a little bit, but it's not going to get out of control. So this thing is always going to bolt up the way you want it to. Now this is cast, it's all one piece. But now what am I talking about with when I was describing a small block Chevy? Now this problem isn't just with the small block Chevy. I had seen this on, I, I used to be big into Mopars when I was a kid and I seen it on those. I've seen it on Fords. I used to be big into Fords too. I was big into AMCs. Still am, I still love AMCs. And it was kind of a common problem. So what would happen was you would unbolt this manifold. Normally I put headers on it, so I really didn't pay attention. But you would unbolt this manifold to do whatever it is you had to do. Now when you went to go put the manifold back on, the bolt holes wouldn't line up. Well, why? Well, what would happen, see there's no flange in between. So now this thing would heat up and whatnot, and an exhaust manifold can get almost cherry red, especially on an older car that has a carburetor and stuff like that, and it's maybe not running optimum like today's fuel-injected cars. So what would happen is, over time, these things would distort. Sometimes they would break the bolts. Now if you look, see the size of these holes? Now look at the size of those holes. See how, see how small they are? The reason for that is these, would, these are the lineup uh, bolt holes, and this would line it up in the car. So you would line those up and then you would catch the ends. Usually it was the longer end like this. Now, had this been uh, for a small block Chevy, like this is for a 4.3, which is basically a small block Chevy with two cylinders missing. If this was a small block, it would have another leg over there, like this one, but you know, further out this way. Usually it was the end legs that were a problem. What would happen is they would get distorted over time, you unbolt them, and now all of a sudden this end of this flange would kick in a little bit. Same thing with the one that was over here. It would kick in a little bit. And you couldn't line the bolt holes up. So when I was younger, you know, I didn't know they made a special tool for that. So I would actually drill the bolt holes out a little bit bigger. It worked. I never really had a problem with it. But one time I was doing it and the guy says to me, why don't you use the tool? Well, what tool? This tool right here. You can still get these. Um, this is actually a it, it's a it's it's a wedge, and what it does is you stick it in there and you tighten down on it, and it's it's a spreader. It'll spread the legs of the manifold out. So this way you can do what you have to do. It'll spread it out, you catch the bolts, tighten them down, and then you take the tool out. Let me show you. 
So here, what you would do is you would stick this tool in between like this. Let's see if I can't get this in there. Yeah, just like this. You would stick the tool in there like this. And then as you tighten that up with a wrench, you tighten it up with a wrench. It's basically a turnbuckle, but you would go and put the pressure outward. So as you're putting the pressure outward, it would push this leg over. Obviously it would push that leg a little bit too, just depends. But usually you would have this one bolted down. So as you're doing this, it would push this leg outward. And I'm sure if you went enough, you could probably break the exhaust manifold. I never did, never had an issue. But basically that pushes it out just enough to catch the bolt holes. Now the reason I'm actually bringing this up now is because this tool I've probably had 25 years. And as you could see by looking at it, I don't use it all that often. But I was just doing that engine on that 4.3, the one that I wound up having to do an oil pump on. And that thing turned out fine. It's gone. Everything was good with that. <clears throat> but I had to break this out for the driver's side exhaust manifold. And, of course, I just wasn't thinking of it at the time. And I was like, shoot, I should have made a video on that. And I should have showed you how it actually worked because I couldn't catch the two bolt, the two bolt holes. Mo had never seen one of these tools. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people have never seen one of these tools. I don't even know if there's a number on this thing. Wow, it's amazing how tight that thing got already. Let's turn it the right way. Okay. Let me see if there's any numbers on this. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Overexpanding will break manifold. But no, there's actually no tool number or anything like that. I think this might be a Lyle. I'm really not sure. But I know they still sell them. Um, I did see one one day on like a help package in the parts store, which I thought was kind of neat, you know, because it's like it, this is not something you see every day. And it's cheap. I don't... I, when I bought this thing, it was probably 10 bucks. It's probably 25 now. But even still, if you're using your old exhaust manifolds, you want to have something like that. Many of the older American cars, big block Chevys, you know, Chrysler, um, Ford, AMC, they all used a manifold design similar to this, you know, with ind independent legs that weren't tied to one another with like a casting. So it can happen to any of them. And, you know, of course, if you're just doing a stock rebuild on, you know, your own vehicle or you just did a head gasket or you had to take the exhaust manifold off for whatever reason, um, you know, sometimes a tool like this is necessary. So anyway, I just thought I wanted to show you that just because I find it interesting. It's like I said, it's a tool that I maybe use once every eight years, if, if that, seven years back in the, way back when I was uh, when I first got the tool. You know, of course, you know, small block Chevy was the most common motor in, you know, your Impalas or your Caprices or whatever. And um, Camaros, doesn't matter. But it was just, it was so commonplace. And, you know, you would get them with blown head gaskets, whatever. And you'd have to take them apart. And when you went to go back together, that's when you had a problem. So, and like I said, did I even say it in this video? But what I used to do before I found out about it, I drilled them out. Yeah, I did say that. Duh. Getting old. So... Uh, but yeah, I just thought that'd be kind of interesting. So anyway, if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.